In this video, we are going to take a look at conceptual massing in Revit. We're going to create a conceptual massing model first. We're going to load these conceptual massing models back into the Revit project environment, which we've been working with for the last few videos. Number three, we're going to cut mass floors through our building. And lastly, we're going to apply building elements to our conceptual massing. So let's get started. From our recent files menu, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on our new conceptual mass. It's going to open up the conceptual mass folder and I'm going to click on my mass and open up this family template file. This is where you will begin all your conceptual masses outside of the project environment. You'll see as this environment comes up, it differentiates itself from the project environment by the gray background as well as as I hover over, you'll see my work planes are also visible here in the 3D view that opens up by default. So the first thing I want us to do is to go to our floor plan view. In this floor plan view, we're going to create a U-shaped plan. From the Create tab, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on Model for the model lines we're going to work with first here. And I'm going to click on my line tool. I want it to create it at level 1. And I'm going to just begin to lay out this U-shaped plan in sketch view. For this lab, I'm not as concerned with the dimensions as much as I am understanding the foundational basics of creating a conceptual mass. So now I have a U-shaped plan sketch that I created here in my level 1 floor plan. I want to go back to my 3D view. So I'm going to double click on that. Come back to my 3D view and I want to click on the 3D sketch that I created. And after we click on this sketch, you'll see that the create form button now appears. So I'm going to click that. When I click on the create form button, you'll see now You'll see now Revit extrudes that sketch that we created and gives it a 70 foot height. I'm going to double click on this temporary dimension and change that dimension to 12 feet, which I want to eventually be my floor to floor. I'm going to zoom in some with my wheel. Now I realize we need to add some levels as this conceptual massing is going to stack level by level. So I'm going to go to my elevation view, any one that you choose, but I'm going to use the north elevation. I'm going to come back to my create tab, down to my datum panel, and click on level. I'm going to come up 12 feet for my level 1. Click, and you'll see that it's different from the project environment a little bit. Revit actually continues the line for me. And so I'll just click a second time and it will create this level too. Because I know that in this exercise we are going to need eight levels, I'm going to create them while we are here now. Here's my level three. I'm going to come up another 12 feet on my level four. Another level five, six, seven, and level eight. I'm going to hit escape twice and come back to my 3D view. 
You'll see in this 3D view, I can actually see each level in my project. The levels are available in the 3D view here. I'm going to click on my top face, which is going to bring up my indicator that allows me to extrude it in this Z direction. And I'm just going to click this blue arrow and begin to drag. And you'll see that as I hover over each level, you'll see that the level that I have extruded the object to is actually in bold face. So right now we're at the top of our building, down here to level 7, and so forth. I'm going to come down to level 2. You'll see the lock appears that I can lock it to this level. For this video, we're going to focus on the conceptual massing, not the constraints. So I'll leave that lock alone. Now I'm going to click on my level 2 floor plan. And I actually want to create a mass on the second level that is inset from the ground floor. So in order to do that, I'm going to come back up to our create panel click on model lines and for this one because I know that I want to offset my ground floor that shows below me in this level too I'm actually going to click my pick lines tool in the draw panel and I'm going to come down to my options bar and I'm actually going to put in a 10 foot offset Now you'll see that as uh, my cursor moves to one side or the other of my ground floor plan, it's giving me a 10-foot dotted line that represents the offset that I've requested in the options bar. So I'm going to click on this edge. And I'm just going to go around my U-shaped plan and add the sketch line work that I needed. you see Revit actually trimmed the pick lines command for me. So let's go ahead and extrude this sketch as well. I like to extrude my volumes from a 3D view, so I'm going to continue to go back to this 3D view. And I'm going to highlight the new sketch that we created on level 2 which once again brings up this create form button that I'm going to use to create another extruded form. You see that it's giving me a 60 foot height. I want this height to come down and be associated with my level 4. So I'm just going to click as I've done and as I drag down to I get to my fourth floor level highlighted there we are. And click. Now I have my mass on the ground floor, which I'll tab through actually to select that entire object, as well as I'll come up here and I'll tab through and I can select my mass that's on my second and third floors. The next thing I want us to do is create a void form. We've worked with solid forms for our ground floor and our two-story space starting on the second floor. But let's create a void form that will allow us to express entry in this form. So I'm going to come back to our level one floor plan where I want to start this void form. I'm actually going to come down here and change to a wireframe view just so that I can see just my line work without the shadow and the shade. I'm going to come up to my Create tab, click on Model Lines again, and I'm just going to use my rectangle for this. And I'm just going to create a rectangle representing this entry that I'd like to create a void in the form for. Hit escape. Come back to my 3D view. 
to be able to see this form work in my 3D view, I'll go to a wireframe as well. Wireframe just allows me to be able to see the framework that I've created prior to creating a form from it. Right now it's just in sketch view, which if you see, when I have it in a hidden line representation, I cannot see the line work. So I'm going to use my wireframe view for this. Now that I have that form still selected, I'm going to come up to create form. This time I'm clicking the drop down, which reveals the void form button. I'm going to use my void form button. I'm going to use this Z direction. and I'm going to drag it. Once again, I know that my two-story form goes up to the fourth floor, so I'm going to click and drag until I have my fourth floor level. And I know that that will create a void that goes from my ground floor all the way to the top of the masking that I have now. I'm going to deselect. I'm actually going to go back to a hidden line view just so that I can see how the void form has affected my massing. As you'll see here, the void form has cut the first massing that we created. However, it did not cut the second and third floor massing that we created. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Because I've actually created two separate massing pieces, the void form is cutting only the first one. So let's cut the second one. We do not need to create another void form. We can do it with the first one. From, it, from, from an intersection, I'm going to tab through until I see the outline of my void form. Then I'm going to click and select it. And I see it does, in fact, intersect that second form. So let's just click out here. Now I'm going to tab through and select my form that I would like to cut. I'm going to come up here. And after I have this form selected, now you'll see my geometry panel appear again. This works similar to the curtain wall and cutting it into a second wall as well. I'm going to click on Cut Geometry. First thing we're going to do is we're going to sec select our mask that we'd like to cut. The second thing we're going to do is select that void form. Just by hovering over an intersection where that void form outline currently cuts. You'll see I can see my void form and I'll click again 